Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders, and my edition of Sunday Vibrations, my thoughts from the Philippines. I love the Philippines for a lot of reasons, and number one, as a black American man, no matter what Filipinos think of me, they don't hate me. I'm free here, and I'm welcome like no other place that I've ever been. After being born and raised in America, the violence and hate started to affect me. I was glad to find a place where I'm not followed, looked at as a suspect, harassed, or feared. I feel safe. The weight of the world has been lifted from my shoulders, and you can tell the difference. Even my friends back home can tell the difference. They say I look younger and happier. When you wave at people here, they wave back. When I'm standing in line at the grocery store, people will come up to me smiling and wanting to talk. I've been here for over 11 years, and it still seems new. There's so much to do and see. The lessons that I, of life that I've learned here are too many to count. The one that stands out is this. I'm judged by my character here. People actually treat me as a man and not as a boy. It's always sir this and sir that. I love the Philippines for a lot of reasons, but the respect that I receive here is tops. Thanks to the Filipino people for judging me by my character rather than the color of my skin. And no, I didn't change my channel. I'm still boots on the ground. I'm still in the middle of all of this. I'm still channel that helps the new man and woman who's never been here to the Philippines. And I'm still not an expert. I'm still going to give you the nitty gritty and I'm still never going to sugarcoat it. And that's not going to start today. Uh, this is something called Sunday Vibrations, my thoughts from the Philippines. Just some random thoughts that's been going through my mind today and some of the questions from my viewers and subscribers. First thing that I want to talk about, and I opened up my video like that for a reason, because the first, the, the, the second most requested answer that I give is to a question. And here it is. As a black man, how are you treated in the Philippines? That's why I opened up like that, because I want to just explain it to you that way uh, without going into any detail. Just to let you know I'm welcome here. It stands in stark contrast to what the treatment I receive at home. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not putting anybody down. But that's the answer because you know what the number one answer is, of course. It's Filipino, Filipino, Filipino. Anything Filipino. Okay. That's the number one answer that I give. The first thing I want to talk about is the dollar, man. It's, it's really concerning, man, for me. Uh, I had talked to you about it before, a little bit about it, but it just continues to slide. And I did a little research, and I remember I was in Cebu in December of 2018. I'm at this little mall. I remember I had to exchange some money. The exchange rate was 53.8 pesos to the dollar. And I was like, man, that's a lot, you know, because that's, that's the highest since I've been here, the 11 years I've been here. It's the highest that I've seen it. So they gave me, you know, for every hundred I exchanged, they gave me 5,380 pesos, right? Fast forward to today, and I think the exchange rate today is 48.4 pesos to the dollar. So that same hundred dollars, I exchanged it, they're giving me 4,840 pesos, which is a, a, a difference of 500 and... Uh, 40 pesos. That's a lot, Jeff, guys. That's about 11 U.S. dollars I've lost off that $100 in that two years. That's a lot, a lot of money. That's over, that's 11%, all right? And then you put on top of that uh, inflation, that's sky high, the sky high here. And you kind of wonder why a lot of foreigners and expats are bypassing the Philippines. They're saying, man, it's getting too expensive over there. They have other options closer to home, like Mexico and places like that. They're saying, why would I fly away to the Philippines when I can get the same value a little bit better for my dollar in Mexico? You understand? I mean, so it's very concerning to me. I've lost a lot of money, and I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination, man, but I mean, Imagine eleven dollars of every hundred that you're exchanging. That's a big, big deal, and it keeps on going down as long as this COVID is here. Because 
it has something to do, I'm not an economist, but it has something to do with the fact that Philippines isn't exporting and importing a whole lot of things. So the peso is strong, the strongest that it's been in four years. So it's really concerning to me, you know, um, then you put that inflation on top of it and it's getting expensive over here. You know, it's still low compared to America, obviously, but it's just, it's concerning for me, you know, so I hope they uh, hurry up and get that vaccine, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about. I was reading in the Manila Times today where the Philippine COVID vaccine czar, that's what they call him, Carlito Galvez Jr. He's saying that the Philippines has set a goal for May 2021 for the rollout of the vaccine. And I was like, man, that's good. I mean, it's fast, but it's good. And I take my hat off to him. Uh, because, of course, the trials, some trials have started already here with, I think, Russia and some com companies from China because it's needed. I'm going to show you toward the end of this video. I'm going to show you. I went to the grocery store the other day, man. It was, it was crickets. There's nobody in there. Maybe three people in this big Save More store. And, I mean, I've never seen it like that over here. You know, on, on my video, patients, patients, patients. I tell you, in the Philippines, everywhere you go, you got to fall in line. But now, because of this COVID, there's no line to fall in, man. And, and, and it's sad. So, hopefully, they'll get that rolled out. And my guess is this. They're going to try to make everybody take it. Or at least, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to have to have proof that you've taken the vaccine in order to move around freely. That's just coming from me. I really don't know. This is just my take on it and the way that they do business over here. So let's hope, let's pray, those of you who pray, that they can roll that out May of 2021. And it's going to cost a lot of money over here. So you know... They're going to be tough on it. They're going to probably try to make you take it, and especially if you want to move around freely uh, and enjoy the Philippines like I used to enjoy it pre-pandemic. Uh, I just want to take a second to talk about the, uh, to talk to the Lonely Hearts Club members who listen to these dating gurus and uh, dating experts on YouTube and Facebook and online you know, about how to meet the Filipina and this and that. Well, the Filipina's not weak, okay? I'm going to give you some valuable information right here, and it ain't going to take me less than a minute to do it. Filipina's not weak. She's not meek. You have to be tough, extremely tough, to make it over here in this society. And not only does she make it, she thrives in this society. Filipinas run everything over here. You go to the market, they're running everything. When you see these street vendors, it's Filipinas. Okay, remember, they've had two female presidents over here in the last 30 years. That's very, very impressive. So Filipinas aren't weak. They're tough. And they have an edge. And they'll take that edge and they'll cut you in half before you ever know what happened. All right? So when you come over here, don't think that, oh, you've called a Filipina. Uh, you know, no, here's what's happened. She's voluntarily stepped into your trap. Okay, there's nothing special about you. You didn't do nothing special. She voluntarily stepped in that trap. Okay, and the longer you deal with her, the greater the odds are in her favor that she's going to come out on top. So that's just to the Lonely Hearts Club members who continue to listen to these dating specialists and these uh, romance experts on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, and online. Filipina is not weak. She's tough as nails. All right? One more thing I want to address, and this was kind of interesting because I did a video uh, yesterday. The real nitty-gritty uh, culture shock that foreigners experience when they come to the Philippines. Well, one of my comments was, what's the real nitty gritty that Filipinos, uh, the, the real nitty gritty culture shock Filipinos experience when they go to America? Can you give me some examples? Absolutely. And it's real simple, okay? They'll go over, it'll be two Filipinos, they'll be in the mall, they'll be in the grocery store, and they're talking to each other in their own language. 
And then some lady will turn around and say this. Speak English or go back to where you came from. That's culture shock. That Filipinos and a lot of foreigners that come to America experience. All right? It's real simple. If somebody hears you speaking your language over there, they're going to confront you and they're going to say, you either speak English or you go the F back to where you came from. Do you think that'll shock them? Yeah, it's culture shock. Something else, and let's be honest, guys, okay? This is something that Filipinas and Filipinos experience. And the culture shock when they deal with American men, especially when they start having sexual relations with, Mar I mean, with American men. Uh, it's culture shock because they're saying, you want me to do what? You want to put that where? We shock them, you know. We put them through the paces, and we ask them to do things that they never even dreamed of doing. And they're shocked. It's culture shock. See? So, you know, it's just a couple examples of culture shock that Filipinos and a lot of foreigners, they uh, face when they go to America. It's not just us coming over here, but, yeah, when they go over there, and it's, it's more than just the fast-paced lifestyle of America because, see, you got to realize America... Because of the capitalism, America is, and this isn't me, you can look this up, the easiest country in the world, the entire planet, to earn a living and raise a family. They've lowered the bar so low to include everybody that wants to be included. That's why when you see foreigners over there, they thrive and after three or four years, you don't have to wonder why. That's because what? Okay. I used to tell my wife all the time, why are you in such a hurry to go over there? Jobs are there, okay. As soon as we got there, she starts earning $15 an hour. That's a lot of money for her. Imagine somebody who earned about $100 a month. Now she's earning uh, 750 pesos per hour. All right? You add that up. That's about 6,000 pesos per day on an eight-hour day. With full benefits, you know, 401k and all that. Two weeks vacation. See, so it, you see why it doesn't take long for them or uh, any foreigners to make it over there. But thanks for stopping by. I'm going to show you the store and I'm going to do my outro doing that store, doing the video of the store. Take care and I'll see you next time. It's late in America. You're already in bed. I hope you're ready to help somebody before your head hit the pillow. In the Philippines, we still have the rest of the day to find somebody to help. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. When we help other people, we help ourselves. Stay COVID-free. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Take a look at this store. If you don't think this pandemic and these lockdowns have had a devastating effect on economies of countries around the world, this is a great, big, gigantic, save more store, very popular store here in the Philippines. Probably had three or four people, so let's hope we can turn this thing around. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.